So this is the last module of internal combustion engine. This module is also divided into two parts. That is, first is the alternative fuels and second is the engine control unit. So what are the alternative fuels? See, the traditional fuels that can be used inside your automobile engine are petrol and diesel, right? But these petrol and diesel also have some disadvantages. So to overcome these advantages, some other fuels are now being looked into, uh, which can be used inside your internal combustion engine, and those are your alternative fuels. What is the engine control unit? Engine control unit is basically a set of sensors, a uh, processing unit, and some actuators, which can be used to control the engine uh, performance and processes. For example, uh, we have several different engine control units inside your system which control the amount of air coming into your engine, the amount of fuel being injected into your combustion chamber and all that is engine control unit. So in this first lecture, we will be seeing what are the alternative fuels that are being used nowadays inside the internal combustion engine and in the further videos, we will be looking at engine control unit. Okay. So the what are the main reasons for looking into alternative fuels? See, petrol and gasoline are traditionally used as fuels, but they have their own limitations. So what are basically the limitations of this? The main limitations are that diesel leads to high amount of NOx and particulate matter production. See, NOx is very bad for humans because NOx when mixed with H2O forms nitric acid and when this nitric acid goes into your lungs, it causes burning of your lungs. Okay, So it can lead to severe breathing problems. Similarly, particulate matter can also cause both breathing problems and cancer. That is why these are extremely harmful to humans. Diesel and petrol cause a large amount of pollution and much greater pollution when compared with natural gas, for example your CNG. Diesel and petrol are both non-renewable. That means what? The diesel and petrol will soon become obsolete and will become exhausted. So we have to find some alternate power sources. Additionally, the production and purification of these fuels is very expensive. Uh, mainly what happens, a uh, large amount of petrol has to be, crude oil has to be imported from OPEC countries. Thus, there is a large amount of cost for the countries that are importing this. Hence, some other fuels which can be manufactured inside the country itself are being looked at. So, what are the main alternative fuels that are being looked at right now? These alternative fuels include alcohol, which is mainly your ethyl alcohol or ethanol hydrogen, natural gas and LPG. Natural gas is also a byproduct of petrol and diesel. It is being looked to because not because it is renewable or anything. It is also non-renewable, but it is produced as a byproduct of petrol and diesel. Thus, wherever there is production of petrol and diesel, natural gas is also produced. Additionally, natural gas is much more cleaner in burning. So it produces less amount of pollution as compared to petrol or diesel. Another uh, include biodiesel, biogas and producer gas. Of this producer gas is not being used right now and there are uh, not many, not too much of uh, research going into using of producer gas but all these other fuels, a large amount of research is going on to introduce these as the next fuel. Okay. So see in this chapter what is expected from you is that you should know what are the different alternate fuels what are the changes inside the engine necessary to use this fuel see you have a petrol engine or diesel engine you cannot directly put alcohol into your petrol engine and diesel engine and expect it to work right some modifications to the engine must be made so what are these modifications that must be made to the engine that should be known to you and you should know what are the advantages and disadvantages of using this particular alternative fuel. okay so the first alternative fuel that we have is alcohol so alcohol is anything which has an hydroxyl function group it is any organic compound which has an hydroxyl function group right so the most common alcohols are what methanol ethanol propanol butanol out of this only methanol and ethanol are generally used as fuel and out of this the most commonly used fuel is ethanol okay ethanol or ethyl alcohol is the most commonly used alternative fuel uh, see, uh, ethanol can be used as a fuel directly, completely by itself. Just as petrol can be used, ethanol can be used as a fuel by itself. Only ethanol can be burnt inside the engine or ethanol can be mixed with petrol, that is gasoline and thus a mixture of gasoline and ethanol can be used for combustion purposes. Right? So, this mixture is currently being used in most countries nowadays. 
in the us they are using 2% ethyl alcohol mixed with petrol in india we are using minimum 5% mixed with uh, petrol right so uh, what is ethanol ethanol how is it produced ethanol is generally produced from our starch crops starch crops examples include sugarcane maize maize is also known as corn in some countries right so that is how ethanol is produced the fermentation of starch crops produces ethanol in india we have to use e5 fuel e5 fuel means what 5% of ethanol is blended into the petrol right india is also looking to venture out into e10 fuel see by using ethanol as a fuel we are reducing the amount of gasoline which has to be imported from the foreign countries right some countries like brazil are directly using e85 fuel okay not in every uh, thing but they have capacity to use e85 fuel that is 85% ethanol mixed with 15% gasoline okay so what are the changes that must be made inside the engine if you want to use ethanol as a fuel the first change that has to be made is that the compression ratio of the increase uh, compression ratio of the engine must be increased ethanol has a higher octane number so the chances of uh, self ignition and knocking are reduced so because of that the compression ratio can be increased which can give us greater efficiency uh, ethanol itself has oxygen inside it right c2h5oh so the amount of oxygen from air required for the combustion of ethanol is less hence the air intake quantity must be modified so that ethanol is burned properly ethanol is extremely corrosive hence all the metal particles that it comes in contact with it will cause corrosion hence to prevent this corrosion the fuel lines the injector piston cylinder and piston ring all these things must be coated with nickel because nickel prevents the corrosion of metal by ethanol also ethanol causes damage to the rubber parts we have to prevent the damage to the rubber parts hence uh, there are two options either the rubber part should be replaced more frequently or rubber should be replaced with any other material which is not affected by ethanol additionally it is also seen that during the tests performed on ethanol it was seen that ethanol also leads to a higher consumption of uh, lubricating oil hence more amount of lubricating oil is required for a engine using ethanol so these are the engine modifications that must be made in the engine if you want to use ethanol as a fuel what are the advantages of using ethanol as a fuel the main advantage of using ethanol as a fuel is that it can be produced within the country itself and hence it reduces the amount of imported crude oil right ethanol is produced as a by product of certain crops such as sugarcane when there is production of sugar from sugarcane ethanol can also be produced in the uh, industry itself uh see uh, in this line it says that the well to wheel power transmitted in ethanol is more as compared to gasoline so what this line exactly means that the brake thermal efficiency of ethanol is more than the brake thermal efficiency of gasoline okay that is a simple thing brake thermal efficiency of ethanol is more than the brake thermal efficiency of gasoline engine ethanol has a higher octane number hence the compression ratio can be increased and as you know with increase in compression ratio there is increase in engine efficiency Additionally uh, the global warming effect of ethanol is also less as compared to gasoline what are the disadvantages of using ethanol see the main disadvantages of growing using ethanol is its production see how can you produce ethanol you have to produce ethanol using starch crops but if starch crops are used to produce ethanol then these starch crops cannot be used as food so there might be some problems to the global food supply chain what does that mean that if large amount of crop is used to produce ethanol then it cannot be used for consumption right so that will be a huge problem another thing is that ethanol is very corrosive and hence it can cause damage to the engine parts additionally ethanol has a high affinity for water what does it mean that ethanol absorbs large amount of water and if this water enters into your engine then it can cause damage to the various engine parts Additionally the main disadvantage of using ethanol is that it causes problems during the cold starting of the engine especially in very cold countries where there are sub zero temperatures ethanol refuses to burn at these low temperatures and because of that there will be problems in cold starting of the engine hence some amount of gasoline must be added into the ethanol if we have to use it as a fuel the next alternative fuel that can be used is hydrogen see hydrogen can be used in two ways hydrogen can add you uh, that can be used directly as a fuel for combustion inside the combustion chamber or hydrogen can be used as a fuel for the fuel hydrogen fuel cell 
what does the hydrogen fuel cell do hydrogen fuel cell converts the hydrogen into electricity and this electricity can then be used to drive the motor which will then drive the wheel but in our case we are looking at it as hydrogen as a direct fuel which will be burnt inside the combustion chamber itself okay so whenever you have to combust hydrogen inside the engine you have to do several modifications of the first thing that you have to remember that hydrogen has very high amount of energy density right so even a small amount of hydrogen burning will produce a large amount of power hence to accurately control the amount of power that is being developed it is very necessary to control the amount of hydrogen which is entering into the engine and hence to control that quantity we require sensors and engine control systems this cannot be done manually the control of hydrogen going inside the engine cannot be done manually and sensors and ecu is necessary a separate a complete separate fuel delivery system must be developed for hydrogen because hydrogen is a gas we cannot use our traditional fuel supply system right so a separate supply system needs to be developed and the injectors must be modified for using gaseous injection see the traditional injectors that we have they are used for what they are used for liquid injection of petrol and diesel but the uh, hydrogen requires injection of a gas hence the injectors must be modified if you are using a hybrid engine then you need port injection system okay then as hydrogen has a very low ignition temperature that it can burn even if at low temperatures hydrogen can start burning so if there are any hot spots inside your engine hot spots means what a point where the temperature is a bit higher so if there are any hot spots inside the engine the hydrogen will start combusting on its own hence adequate cooling must be provided to the engine so that the engine entire engine remains cool and there is no self ignition of hydrogen the air fuel requirement of hydrogen is different hence the engine must be suitably modi modified so that the air fuel requirement of hydrogen is met and there are chances see this is your engine this is your crankcase okay sorry uh, inside your engine see there is a crankcase below what happens generally what happens that the piston rings are supposed to prevent the fuel particles from going into the crankcase right but because hydrogen is so light and hydrogen is so small that the chances are that hydrogen may go into your crankcase and hence we have to prevent the hydrogen from going into the crankcase because the fuel uh, that goes into the crankcase is not burned and thus it is wasted so what are the advantages of using hydrogen the main advantages of using hydrogen is that it produces no emissions the emissions produced of co pm and nox is very very less h2 only produces steam right so that is why hydrogen is considered as the fuel of the future and additionally the hydrogen's density is also very high and because of that combustion produces a large amount of power hydrogen uh, we are not dependent on any other country for the production of hydrogen hydrogen can be produced by each country itself thus the amount of importing can be reduced and hydrogen being a gas it can mix easily with the air and on mixing easily with the air there can be better combustion of hydrogen and hence the combustion is cleaner and easier what are the main disadvantages see the main disadvantages of hydrogen is not with the actual working of the hydrogen engine the main disadvantages of hydrogen currently is its distribution storage and production okay it is very difficult to produce hydrogen it is very expensive also hence it is not being done on a large scale even when it is produced it is highly volatile and requires a very high volume as it cannot be stored in liquid form it can only be stored in gaseous form hence a large amount of volume is required with large amount of protection because hydrogen is highly flammable hence the distribution and storage network is very difficult to establish hydrogen cannot be liquefied and because it is highly flammable large amount of precautions are necessary so as to ensure that the hydrogen does not get burnt the next alternate fuel that we can use is natural gas see uh, the main component of natural gas is methane okay ch4 natural gas where is natural gas produced natural gas is produced in the same places where oil fields are present generally what happens whenever you have an oil field underground there is oil over here crude oil and over this there is natural gas this natural gas can be easily tapped and removed and this can be used as a fuel okay so natural gas has been traditionally used for domestic purposes see for example natural gas was traditionally used in our houses for domestic purposes such as cooking and heating the houses in cold countries 
but nowadays with the imp, uh, implementation of natural gas further on it has been seen that natural gas burns much more cleaner that uh, the amount of pro pollution produced by the burning of natural gas is very less and hence natural gas is nowadays even being used inside automobiles as well okay uh, so natural gas can be used as compressed natural gas or liquefied petroleum gas so whenever we are using cng as a gas a uh, fuel what are the changes that must be made to the engine first of all the self ignition temperature of cng is very high which means what it must be compressed a lot before it starts burning hence the compression ratio of the engine must be increased another thing a separate tank must be provided for the storage of cng right so instead of just your fuel tank you also need a separate cng tank and that cng tank must be extremely robust and thick so as to prevent any chances of leakages then what do we need we need a separate fuel delivery system because it is a gas our traditional fuel delivery system cannot be used in case of hybrid systems hybrid systems what means what they use both petrol and they use cng also and they can use a mixture of both also in some cases so a separate system is necessary a separate control system is necessary to adjust when petrol is coming and when cng is coming okay so that becomes a bit high additionally cng has a very high self ignition temperature and because of very high self ignition temperature it requires a high sp energy spark and uh, another main disadvantage of cng is what it can cause damage to the rubber parts of the engine hence either these rubber parts must be replaced very quickly or a suitable other material must be used to ma manufacture these rubber parts what are the advantages and disadvantages of using cng uh, the main advantage of using cng is that it has very low amount of pollution as compared to petrol and diesel engines because cng undergoes better and cleaner combustion the life of the engine is increased and it also reduces the amount of soot that is deposited on the spark plug and the frequency of oil changing is also reduced cng is directly produced from the oil fields which are as such producing petrol hence they can be considered as a secondary product of oil mix cng has a higher octane number hence the chances of knocking are reduced additionally cng uh, having a higher octane number the compression ratio of the engine can be increased increasing the efficiency of the engine and cng is because of its high self ignition temperature cng is le less likely to self ignite hence it is much safer because there are chances of self ignition are less what are the main disadvantages the main disadvantages of cng is that its storage and uh, transportation right first of all the so storage must be proper so that there should be no leakages of the cng then a separate infrastructure is required for the distribution of cng just as there are petrol pumps and diesel pumps there must be separate cng pumps as well so this must be established then as cng is stored in gaseous form it requires a much larger volume for storage additionally the energy density per volume of cng is also very less hence what happens the range till which the vehicle can go is reduced then cng can only be used in places where there are a large number of cng petrol stations available right see biogas now see bio the main component of cng is also methane the main component of biogas is also methane so basically the thing that is combusting inside the engine is the same so whatever the changes are necessary for cng same are the changes required for biogas and whatever are the advantages and disadvantages of cng same are the advantages and disadvantages of biogas the only difference is what exactly is biogas See, biogas is a mixture of gases which is produced by the breakdown of organic matter in the absence of oxygen okay there are some bacteria which undergo anaerobic oxidation of this organic matter but inside the biogas there are a large number of th gases produced which include methane but also include some harmful components like co2 h2 and h2s now these components cannot be sent into your internal combustion engine these components must be removed hence after the production of biogas there is further treatment taken place on the biogas itself and then it is converted into a gas which has very high quantity of ch4 and very low quantity of these other gases this gas is known as biomethane okay so rather than saying biogas we must always say biomethane when it is being used as a fuel inside your engine right 
as i said before the main component of both biogas and natural gas is methane so the engine modifications are the same as that of your natural gas also the advantages and disadvantages are same as your natural gas another fuel that is being another alternate fuel that is being thought of nowadays is biodiesel see why what is biodiesel and how does this id concept come from whenever we use any vegetable oil or animal oil for our frying purposes it uh, see in big think big chains food chains like mcdonald's kfc etc they use a large amount of frying oil but this frying oil ha uh, also has to be after its use it has to be thrown away but it is also hydrocarbon oil is also hydrocarbon petrol and diesel are also hydrocarbon what is the difference petrol and diesel are smaller hydrocarbons smaller chain hydrocarbons whereas your oils are larger chain hydrocarbons hence what happens these uh, animal oils and vegetable oils these can be further worked upon there can be further treatment done on these and then they can be converted into diesel which can be used inside the engine itself right so what is biodiesel biodiesel is uh, made from vegetable oils and animal fats after further treatment biodiesel just as ethanol can be added inside your petrol engine biodiesel can be added inside your diesel engine just like e5 e10 where e denotes ethanol and 5 denotes that the 5% of the fuel is ethanol we can have b2 and b5 where b is biodiesel which is added inside the diesel itself so thus biodiesel is being used nowadays mixed with diesel itself right so what are the changes in the energy engine necessary for using biodiesel see mainly biodiesel can be used directly inside the diesel engine with ease of biodiesel where biodiesel b20 where the quantity of biodiesel is less than 20% can be used directly in the engine without any modifications of the engine the main problem of biodiesel is that it causes clogging of the engine filters because biodiesels are much longer chain compounds they cause clogging of the engine filters hence these filters must either be replaced or these filters must be cleaned uh, more frequently another point is biodiesels have high pore point and hence get solidified very easily hence there is a problem during cold starting hence a separate heating system is necessary for biodiesels another problem of biodiesel is that it reacts with rubber hence to prevent this it is necessary either to make these parts out of some other product or to uh, use uh, or to change these rubber parts more frequently so these are the different alternate fuels which are in your syllabus so main thing as i said before you must know only three things these three things are what are the engine modifications necessary and what are the advantages and disadvantages of using all these alternate fuels so what are the advantages of biodiesel uh, bio advantages of biodiesel is that it is made from animal and vegetable fat hence it is a renewable source of energy biodiesel can be used in diesel engines with little or no modification so great changes are not necessary biodiesel reduces co2 emission additionally biodiesel is much more cleaner as compared to your normal diesel and biodiesel because it is made from oils itself it has high amount of lubricity which reduces the wear and tear and increases the life of the engine the main disadvantage is that biodiesel is produced from vegetable and animal fats so if all the crops are used for the production of biodiesel it can cause problems in the global food chain right and there might not be enough food for people as it contains long chain hydrocarbons it is not suitable for cold starting and as it reacts with rubber hence it cannot be directly used without changing the parts of the engine so as i said before you should know what are the engine modifications for each and every alternate fuel what are its advantages and disadvantages thank you